We have a really beautiful sunny day today and I'm doing some work in our little cattle panel high tunnel. Yes, this thing is still here. I made a video, I'll try to link to it here, of the original build. Still the original plastic, still the same structure. It cost $150, was it eight years ago? Maybe even longer. Um, anyway, what I'm trying to do today is get this place prepped so that I can plant hot peppers to grow for the season. I want to share some notes on ways of taking collected rainwater and being a little bit more effective in how we can send that water into a space. Most folks that watch this channel know that we work pretty much exclusively with collected rainwater. We use solar panels and pumps to move water around. In fact, this water, just a quick, quick side detour, bear with me if you already know this, just past the pups, Lenny and table man George, is the origin of that water, which are those rain tanks there. Rainwater is collected off of our roof, down through the gutters, into the tank, very, very, very slowly, slowly across this hose. It eases its way, slightly upslope, but not fully upslope, to this tank. And then we've got these float valves. I'll talk about those in more detail. For the most part, the way this works is I have a watering can, we dip in, we fill the watering can, we water in the high tunnel. Now, this space has been, not abandoned, but left to its own devices for quite a while this season. The north side is beautiful with rose campion and um, mioga ginger. The south side is where the hot peppers go. It needs a lot of irrigation. And for me, right now, to fill this can 20 times and hike it in, I think I'd like to have a pump help me. I'm going to look in the front at another high tunnel where we've been experimenting with an improvement on this idea. Right now I'm walking through the jungle of our front yard to the same size high tunnel, uh, cattle panel high tunnel. This is four cattle panels. And this year this space is producing, uh, it's just finally getting up to speed. So slow, so beautiful. Um, turmeric. Got a whole pile in here and we've got some on the south side. We're allowing the kale that was in here to keep growing and slowly transitioning it to turmeric. It takes a lot of water to have these happy. So up until recently, I will show you exactly how we dealt with watering. We took this old watering can. This has a leak or two, but nothing too bad. Nothing a little tape can't help. And we've got this 55 gallon plastic drum cut off. It's got a float valve. It's got some mosquito larva, but that's just more protein to feed the turmeric. You can see the float valve lets the water refill. You can see the leak <laughs> water stuff on the way. And here I go with one gallon, uh, two gallons of water, walking through the sun chokes, carrying it. Now Sasha does a lot of this watering too. She's holding Zelda a lot of the time. We water. That's why we like cutting these off because they flow more easily. And that lets me water in here, that lets us water in here. But each time we we have to walk out of the high tunnel, we have to dip in, we have to carry it back over. And there we go, I need about eight of these to do this tunnel nicely. There's a better way. So you can see I've got this hose here. This was a decent quality hose that we invested in a ways back that is threaded onto. In fact, I'll show this in more detail in a bit, but let me demonstrate for now. We've got a 12 volt bilge pump. I've talked about these in the past. We can do deeper dives on this. I'm just giving an overview in this one. Uh, $20 pump, 12 volt DC, and it's wired up. You can see I've got it in this container, so that's a little bit easier to manage it. And we let that container go nice and into the tank. Very elegantly wired together. It's a low voltage situation, so I'm not worried about shocking or anything like that. we got a fuse just in case there's an issue. And you can see the float valve is refilling this automatically. And I'm using a used battery. We looked online, found on eBay, somebody was selling used lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're like 40 bucks a pop. We can recharge from our solar array. But I could also just hook this directly to a solar panel. But anyway, so 12 volt battery. This could be an old truck battery. It could be a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be Anderson power pole. It could be little alligator clips, you name it. But a battery or a solar panel is now running that pump that is in that tank that's automatically refilling. And I'm wasting water now because I've got a full on beautiful jet of water. So Sasha, when she's with Zelda, can use one hand and water really comfortably and we can water up to 45 or 50 gallons before that tank is empty. Then we just simply unplug, give it a few hours to recharge. 
We really don't need more than about 20 gallons at a time to extremely hydrate this space. The turmeric is a very thirsty crop as far as we understand and seems to really respond to this ample watering. So this is an upgrade of saying, okay, we've got these little rainwater collection spaces throughout. We've got these little tanks with float valves that keep them topped off. I'll put notes in the description for some of the details of what you can search for. But then for $20 for the pump, $40 for a battery, or it could have been a free battery, could just be a used solar panel or one with cracks in it, who cares? 12 volt system lets us pump the water very comfortably while we get the soil in here extremely hydrated. The space has been really thoroughly hydrated the other day, so it doesn't actually need it. So I'm gonna take the battery, I'm gonna take this $2 watering wand I got at the reuse store that gives us a rose water so we can spread the water out a little bit instead of beating up the soil and we'll take the pump and migrate it into the back and put it in the other tank. This will be the first time I'm using it back here so it may or may not work. I have a feeling it will. It's a pretty simple idea, uh, pretty straightforward. If this was extremely mucky soil like bottom of a pond or really really algae or mud We'd want a better filter around that pump, but bilge pumps are pretty good at handling a fair bit of debris, and this tank is relatively clean. George likes drinking out of it. Don't you, George? <laughs> He's being shy. But anyway, so that's in there. Uh, I can bring the hose in. I'm really leaning towards the idea of a dedicated pump for this tunnel, and I can just cut the hose and put an end on it. That's the exact length of the tunnel instead of hiking all this extra, but let me get the hose in, let me get the rose water, and I will plug it in and see how it works and share it as we go. George, you excited? Not really. Okay, the hose has the rose water on the end, so I'm hooking up the battery, and that's pumping nice. Definitely more hose than we need here. It's kind of a mess, but that's fine. This is proof of concept. I can hear some promising sounds are going, and now, I can just hang out in here and chat with you lovely folks while I get to rehydrate the heck out of this soil. So I'm going to focus the hydration mainly on the areas where we're going to be planting peppers. So like it's in the middle of the beds. I want to make sure if I run out of time or bandwidth that these are the areas that get it first. But this basically is as good as having a well system. Our whole farm has run off grid. Um, at least the farming aspects. Our home isn't but our farm is, and so the rainwater, it's been almost entirely hauling by hand, and at eight pounds a gallon, I like the idea of little upgrades like this. Um, by all means, it could be used pumps. You can go to a local marine uh, store if you live near a body of water and see what's there. You can find them online, but those are not too expensive uh, as a new thing. The hose you can definitely get for free or cheap and repair. These sorts of heads you can get from local reuse stores and see um, wiring you can do from scrap wire. It's a very low voltage, low energy system. So lots of opportunity there. And the battery, like I said, we're using a battery, uh, lithium iron phosphate, because it's a little bit lighter and uh, more portable, but you could definitely just use a UPS battery or an old truck battery. We can go into some more details on this if there's interest. It's a little bit of a lift for me to take the time and like record a video making them from scratch, but if there's real interest, I can show how we wire all this stuff together. It's janky, it works, but here I am watering in this high tunnel like a regular waterer. It's pretty pleasurable. So you can see all the ingredients here at play. The battery providing 12 volts. Now it could be that instead of that, I use a solar panel. This one's a little undersized for the pump I'm using. The challenge is that we like to water early in the morning or in the evenings or in overcast moments like right now. And so there's a variability. You'd need a, a solar panel that's about twice as powerful as what the pump wants. This one's not powerful enough, but that's definitely an option. And you can see as that pump is running, this float valve, $3 component, I bought a whole pile of them. And that allows the very slow flow of the rainwater tank to refill this. It would absolutely not keep up with the rate of flow of the pump. But my idea is to use 
this water down halfway or so or a little bit further nearly empty is fine and then we unplug and if it takes a day to refill that's fine by me this is slow and small solutions please share in the comments do you do things with moving water that you feel excited to share are there techniques or uh, materials or resources or tools that you find particularly useful let us know we're figuring this out as we go this whole rig that you're seeing right here with the battery is about 60 dollars 70 dollars in total for all that could have been lower price um, but that's not too bad to be able to move water with energy stored in a battery that was uh, recharged from the sun quick shout out this is from hector hot pepper so if you're anywhere in the finger lakes area hector or finger lakes national forest area of the finger lakes they've got some really amazing hot peppers uh, as plants for sale i think these are 250 a piece which is pretty reasonable for the size and lots of crops that they offer in the fall i brought each of the little containers and soaked them in rain water first just to get them really hydrated it also lets me rinse the container so i can give them back to the nursery it's kind of a nice move when you can i'll plug in the last time here pardon my awkward plug there it goes and i'm not going to try to drain this down to nothing but i'll use another 20 gallons or so because why not We've got eight beautiful hot peppers. There's some jalapenos, some fish peppers, and some habaneros. And Sasha makes beautiful hot sauce in the fall. If we can get some basils in here, some other companions, maybe nasturtiums as a ground cover, something other than bare soil, that'd be nice. But the point of this video is being able to water as though you're fancy for pretty cheap. I'll deal with this meal next. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely day. Take care.